The Sakonic C800 is able to measure CRI, TLCI, TLMF, TM30, and SSI. All these indexes have been designed to give you confidence in the color rendering of the lights that you are using. This video will discuss what each of these indexes mean and how you can use the C800 to evaluate and measure them. We will help you choose which one of these indexes or a combination of indexes that you may want to use to provide increased confidence in the lighting you use for your next production and how to evaluate the information the C800 gives you. Before getting into these indexes, there are a few things we would like you to understand. First, we want you to understand the observer. The observer is what each of these indexes uses in order to measure the quality of their score. For example, CRI and TM30 will use human vision as the observer. TLCI will use a three-chip broadcast camera as the observer, and SSI removes the bias of the observer altogether. Second, we want to explain what problem each of these indexes was designed to solve for and how you can interpret this information to help you out with your next production. CRI, Color Rendering Index, is based upon the evaluation of 15 colors using the human eye as the observer. The first eight colors are what the RA or CRI score is based on and R9 through 15 are additional colors that allow you to further evaluate the quality of a light source. You may hear of CRI Extended, which is a score given based upon the evaluation of all 15 colors, but it is not the standard that lighting manufacturers are using when scoring their lights. CRI was designed to score a light based upon how the human eye would be able to accurately perceive colors under ideal daylight conditions. It allows us to examine how light sources that attempt to reconstitute daylight such as mercury vapor, fluorescent, incandescent, and LED will perform. But originally, it was designed to judge fluorescent lamps. So how can you use the C800 CRI readout to evaluate the lights you intend to use? Please note that this next section is biased toward what a filmmaker may look for when evaluating a light. CRI is measured from 0 to 100. A RA value between 85 to 95 is seen as good and above 95 as exceptional. For image makers, this doesn't mean a light is going to be good or bad. It's simply a score based upon eight very muted colors. In today's manufacturing process of LEDs, a lighting manufacturer can tweak or game their lights to score high, but it may still not give you skin tones similar to standard tungsten or standard daylight. Most gaffers and DPs that trust CRI look at R9 strong red, R13 light yellowish pink, and R15 Asian skin tone to see how well a light is going to render skin. If a light has a high CRI RA, value and R9, R13, and R15 values above 85, that most predicts that it will give you pleasing skin tones. If R10 yellow, R11 green, R12 blue, and R14 moderate olive green leaf score high as well, you most likely have a light that won't suffer from severe color rendering problems. The gossip on CRI is simply that it's easy for a manufacturer to get a high score and to still get undesirable and unpredictable results on camera. They refer to this as gaming, the process of making sure that the eight muted colors are present to get a high score. Many are looking to replace it with the TM30, which uses 99 colors instead of eight and gives you the ability to judge how saturated colors will look. How does it differ from TLCI? Well, the observer in TLCI was changed from the human eye to a three-chip broadcast camera. TLCI also looks at 18 colors and takes into consideration that values such as R9 are out of gamut of some television cameras and therefore may not be a good color to use when checking for color rendering as seen by a camera instead of a human eye. If you choose to use CRI to increase your confidence in a lighting fixture, here is how the C800 will help you. The C800 allows you to view CRI in five of its modes. In text mode, you can customize the screen to show your CRI and your favorite R values. Select any of the values underlined in blue and scroll down to the next screen in which you will see RA and R1 through 15. RA is a combined score of R1 through R8 and you will see R9 through 15. So you can show RA at the top of the screen and have R9, R13, and R15 values associated with better skin tones on the screen as well. 
In Spectrum Mode, you can change any of these three values to display RA and two additional R values, as well as preview the spectrum to see where there may be spikes in the spectrum. In CRI Mode, you can see the scores of R1 through R15 and quickly evaluate each R value with the graph. You can also change the default RA value displayed to R1 through R15. In CRI Comparison Mode, you can recall a saved memorized value and compare it to a current measurement. When comparing RA values in this mode, the RA score will appear in green for the light that has the highest value. In Multi-Lights Mode, you can see the CRI of up to four lights at a glance. Select A, B, C, or D. Then, change any of the blue underlined options to RA, and it will give you the RA value of whatever light you have measured. Then, you can simply go to the home screen to compare. So, now that we have explained CRI, let's talk about TLCI, Television Lighting Consistency Index. TLCI is based upon the evaluation of the first 18 colors of an X-Rite Color Checker Classic using a standard television 3-chip broadcast camera as the observer. TLCI, known as TLCI 2012, is an update from the original TLCI. It is scored between 0 and 100. Its score is evaluated in two ways. One, for a film style production in which you will be color grading later, and a broadcast style production in which live footage will be going straight out to the viewer. Here we show you the scale these scores are based upon taken from the EBU, the European Broadcast Union Tech 3355 document. TLMF, the Television Luminaire Matching Factor, is a companion metric to TLCI. Unlike TLCI and CRI, it's based upon a reference, a luminate, or light source that you can choose from. It gives you a score of 0 to 100, rating how well one light compares to another. It allows you to evaluate how two different light sources will work together on set by comparing one to another. TLMF uses all 24 patches on an X-Rite Color Checker Classic. It evaluates the gray patches to factor in color temperature and green magenta shifts between two lights. So, if a 1K tungsten fixture is my main light and I only have one and have the option of using one of three other LED light sources, I can choose which LED will perform the best based on its TLMF score. As always, we recommend you confirm these results with the camera you intend to use. The gossip on TLCI is that it assumes a Rec. 709 rendering rather than a P3 digital cinema rendering, and that today's digital cinema cameras have vastly different spectral sensitivities. It will give you a score that could favor the rendering style of certain cameras over others. The C800 allows you to view TLCI in four of its modes. In text mode, you can customize this screen to show your TLCI and TLMF. In Spectrum Mode, you can change any of these three values to display TLCI or TLMF. And in TLCI slash TLMF mode, you not only get the TLCI, but also the color temperature as well as delta UV of the light source you are measuring. Please note that the TLMF reading that you get in the other modes references the light source you have chosen in TLCI slash TLMF mode. To select a TLMF reference, simply select any value that you have saved in memory. In multi-lights mode, you can see the TLCI and TLMF of up to four lights at a glance. Select A, B, C, or D. Then, change any of the blue underlined options to TLCI or TLMF, and it will give you the values of whatever light you have measured. Then, you can simply go to the home screen to compare. To get more information on TLCI and TLMF, please feel free to read the reference linked in the description. Now, let's look at TM30, Technical Memorandum 30. You will always see it with a dash and a number after it, for example, TM30-18, to specify what version is being used. Before we get started, if your screen looks like this, and not like this, then you need to update your C800 firmware. It means you are using TM30-15 and not TM30-18. To discuss TM30, we are going to compare it to CRI as objectively as possible. 
TM30 has two values, RF and RG, as well as a color vector graphic used to indicate what colors a light source may under or oversaturate. TM30 evaluates 99 colors instead of evaluating 8 or 15 colors like CRI. TM30 RF is similar to CRI RA only in that they both measure color fidelity. RF is on a scale of 0 to 100, similar to CRI, and a higher score is more favorable. RG is on a scale from 60 to 140, with a score below 100 being less saturated, and a score above 100 being more saturated. TM30 also contains a graph, called Color Vector Graphic, that lets you know how over or undersaturated your colors are going to be. Colors on the black line will have proper saturation, colors over the line will have increased saturation, and the arrows will let you know if a hue has a tendency to start to shift towards another hue. For example, this light source shows that greens are shifting towards blue. The conversation surrounding TM30 is that it will be a score used by manufacturers to replace CRI. Many believe it has solved the problem of allowing a manufacturer to game a light, and that the combination of its two scores and graph will give end users a better idea of what results to predict. The C800 allows you to view TM30 in four of its modes. In text mode, you can customize this screen to show your RF and RG values along with three other values. In spectrum mode, you can change any of these three values to display RF and RG and still leave space for another value. In TM30 mode, you will see RF and RG and a large graph split into 16 sections. If your TM30 screen differs from this, you may need to update your firmware. In multi-lights mode, you can see the TM30, RF, or RG of up to four lights at a glance. Select A, B, C, or D. Then, change any of the blue underlined options to RF or RG, and it will give you the values of whatever light you have measured. Then, you can simply go to the home screen to compare. Please see links in the description for some great resources to learn more about TM30. Now, let's take a look at SSI, the Spectral Similarity Index. SSI eliminates the observer, and similar to TLMF, compares how similar two light sources are. But don't confuse it with TLMF, which is only looking at 18 colors and six spectrally neutral patches. SSI is taking a look at the spectral distribution from 380 to 670 nanometers and taking bin measurements every 10 nanometers. For example, the graph in the C800's SSI mode can show you three spectrums. First is your current measurement and two known spectrums. It also has bars that are representational of the bins SSI is measuring, so you can visually see how two lights are spectrally different. SSI has been designed as a light comparison tool and by its nature allows you to have increased confidence in introducing a new light into your workflow based upon a standard light source you already have confidence in. SSI also lets you choose a standard illuminate such as CIE D55, tungsten 3200 Kelvin, and many more. Light sources that are often used when trying to achieve an ideal light source that replicates white light. So when looking at the C800 in SSI mode, you will see your measured light source at the top, and then you can select up to two reference sources below. Once you select a light source to compare it to, you have the option of a standard light source, the ability to input a desired color temperature, or recall a light source you have previously saved to your memory. The standard light sources are standard CIE light sources that have been around for years and reference the targets that most lighting manufacturers use. The input color temperature allows you to input the measured color temperature of the light you are using and see how it compares to a standard light source that perfectly follows the Planck's law from 2000 Kelvin to 4000 Kelvin and CIE Illuminate D of arbitrary color temperature from 4000 Kelvin to 25000 Kelvin and Memory Recall will pull up a memorized value to compare to the existing light measurement. SSI is scored from 0 to 100, with 90 to 100 being excellent, 80 to 90 being good, and 70 to 80 meaning you can have possible problems, and less than 70 means you may have color rendering issues. 
To learn more about SSI, we have a link in the description below. Many ask, how should we use CRI, TLCI, TLMF, TM30, and SSI? First, if any light score is low, then this alerts you to possible problems that it may be difficult or impossible to solve for in post. Secondly, they can help you find lights that will match. Sometimes even after gelling lights to get their color temperature and tints to match, they may not match on camera. You can look at their CRI to see if they have similar R values and if one light has a deficiency in one of its R values. You can look at TLCI to see if their scores are similar, and TLMF will let you know how they compare as well. TM30 will score the color fidelity as well as saturation of your lights, and also let you know how the rendering of hues may shift. And finally, SSI allows you to see how spectrally similar two lights you have may be. So even if they have the same color temperature and tint, they may still be far from a match on camera and you may want to choose another light. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video with anyone who has had questions regarding CRI, TLCI, TLMF, TM30, and SSI color rendering indexes.